Today we will examine, modify, and install a pull start on a motorized bike in such a way that will hopefully make it last. We'll also be giving you guys a brief update on the belt drive system that we installed several months ago. Hey! Oh, you okay? Yeah, I'm, I'm good. What's up? Yeah, I got the script ready for this week. Cool. What are we working on? We are doing an update on the belt drive system. Man, I really don't want to mess with that build. You can't even start it without grinding the teeth on the belt. Well, you could always try a pull start. A pull start? Man, have you seen the reviews on those? They're junk. Look at this. Please read and do not waste money. Broken three pulls started with a drill instead. POS. They promised but can't deliver. Total junk. Total waste of money. Don't buy ever. Garbage. The cord broke after a few pulls along with the handle. Absolute garbage. I don't know what these idiots were thinking. That's, that's the first five reviews. Yeah, I feel you, but viewers have been asking for a pull star video for years. Besides, you could kill two birds with one stone. And they're only like 20 bucks. All right, fine. We'll do the pull star video. God knows YouTube loves failure. That sounds great, man. I actually already have it set up because I was pretty sure I could convince you to do it. You're gonna need uh, wider cranks to clear the case. You're gonna need a tapered bottom bracket, a bottom bracket adapter for the cranberry. You're gonna need new pedals because the original ones won't fit the wider cranks. Oh, and you're gonna have to modify the shit out of that pull start. What the f dude? That's like a lot more parts. Welcome back motorized bike enthusiast. With this build being dubbed the Crybaby, we're installing a pull start so we can continue our test on the belt drive system. In case you missed our initial belt drive testing video, I'll leave a link down in the description. There were some positives and negatives, but one major issue which has prevented me from further testing this belt system. And that is simply that while trying to start the bike, no matter how tight the tension is on the belt, it will slip and the teeth on the belt jump the cogs. Now obviously during long term use this would damage the belt. So we need a way around that and the only thing I can think of is a pull start. This brings in a number of issues, the first being it's a trail of parts. The belt drive requires a pull start, the pull start requires wider cranks, wider cranks require new pedals, and a bottom bracket adapter along with a tapered bottom bracket to fit this specific bike. Your situation might be different, but in most situations I think you're going to need wider cranks. Our second major glaring issue is the fact that, despite looking everywhere, I can't find a pull start with decent reviews. Even if you're willing to spend the money, they just don't exist. Please correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. If somebody's making a decent pull start system for these bikes, I would love to know, but I can't find it. I was able to find two different styles of pull starts, one using a cast aluminum build and one using a stamped sheet metal build. The main failure point that I see being with these pull starts is the teeth that interact with the pulley. But of course there's also the cord which people have said tends to snap quite easily and the spring which can also come undone or break. We're going to do our best to prolong the life of the pull start, but this is one of those parts, probably the only part I've ever put on a bike where you're expecting almost immediate failure, so you have to do everything you can to prevent that. 
So far, I've taken it to work a half dozen times, and I've ridden it about a hundred miles. The pull start has not self-destructed yet, but it has not been issue free. Taking some advice and feedback from other YouTube members, along with members in the Discord server, we've been able to take some precautions to help prolong the life of this pull start. The first thing I did was take the handle off and let the pull start unwind itself one time. This might not be the case for every single one of these, however mine had an extra wind that it simply didn't need it. There's plenty of tension to hold the handle to the case, so we went ahead and got rid of that. This pull start is going to come off and go back on the bike a handful of times throughout the video, but before committing to installing the wider cranks and bottom bracket adapter, I wanted to make sure it was functional. So we just disconnected the bike chain and installed the pull start. Installation of the unit itself was incredibly simple and only took about five minutes. That's of course not including the parts we're going to have to add to the bike to make it practical and the modifications which we inevitably have to do to make it last. However, if you're capable of putting batteries in a remote control, you can install a pull start. There's really no need for a tutorial in this video. One look at these parts and you'll immediately understand how they connect to the motor. Fortunately for me on this Motos motor, the crankshaft protrudes quite a bit on the magnet side, which means we have a good bit of real estate on the threads for our nut to go back on after we install the pull start unit. However, was in the case with me and will probably be with you is we were not able to reinstall the lock washer. It simply takes up too many threads and you wouldn't have anything to bite onto. So instead I added a liberal amount of thread locker. Now luckily the pull start is designed in a way that it pulls the magnet in a direction that would tighten the nut and not loosen it. So as long as you got the nut nice and snug during installation with some thread locker you shouldn't have to worry about it coming loose down the road. I would like to point out that the design of this unit itself looks good to me and at a glance I don't see any major issues with the design. It's the quality of parts used that I have an issue with. The string is thin and easy to break but that can be replaced. The handle is flimsy but that can also be replaced. It's the cast aluminum teeth that engage the pulley that I mainly have a concern about. They're installed in a very flimsy manner and cast aluminum is just not very good at handling these kinds of stresses. So I just don't see it lasting. However, had these been replaced with CNC machined aluminum or steel, then this could potentially last quite some time. During our first installation, this bike did not have a choke because it's using a velocity stack, which we've gone over in previous videos. So I had to use a bit of starting fluid to get her going. After our first startup, I can tell that there are three important things which I'll be doing each time I start the bike to help prolong the life of this unit. Throughout the video, we'll do some modifications which in theory should extend this even further, but for now when I start the bike, I'll make sure that the clutch lever is pulled in, because if I forget to pull in the clutch lever and I yank on that string, it's probably going to snap. Second, I won't carelessly yank on the pull start until it runs out of spool. If you pull on it all the way to the end with enough pressure, it'll probably pull the knot right through the plastic cradle and the recoil of the spring will self-destruct the unit. And third, which is probably not nearly as important but should still help, is I like to make sure the motor is just past top dead center. I slowly pull on the string until I feel strong resistance, I keep pulling past that resistance, and once it starts to give, that's when I'll give it a nice strong tug. I do this for two reasons to help build up momentum and reduce stress on the internal components and to help reduce the possibility of a backfire where the engine begins to fire at top dead center while you're still pulling on it during the beginning of the stroke and it might try and push the string back down which can cause major stress on the internal components. At 
the moment this bike's pretty out of tune. It's got an air leak so it's running lean at low throttle and the jet's too fat so it's running rich at high throttle. But that's not the focus on the video, we'll fix that later. After a few test rides around the neighborhood and about a dozen pull starts without any issues, I decided to go ahead and take it to work that night with my ride on standby. With our first ride to and from work being trouble free, we can backtrack a bit now to the installation process of the bottom bracket adapter and the wider cranks. That's not the subject of this video and there are plenty of videos on how to do that so we're just going to kind of skim over how it went. Well that was an adventure, let's move back to the pull start. I'm disassembling it here so I can grease the internal components for a little bit of a smoother pull and see if there's any other major issues that I need to address. During disassembly I was pleasantly surprised to see that this is a dual spring unit. I don't think the other model has two springs, but I'm not sure. Nor am I completely sure of what the intended purpose of having a dual spring setup on this unit is, but here's what I've noticed. The main return spring, which re-spools the cable and returns the handle to the inward position, is underneath this cover, and in the middle, connecting the inner portion of the spool to the outer portion, is a secondary spring, which acts kind of like a buffer. Uh, some might call this an easy start or recoil pull. I think it's just here to help try and buffer out some of the jarring forces from like engine kickback or if you pull it a little too hard. The outer spool is disconnected from the inner spool and they're combined using the spring. So when you pull on the cable, the inner teeth don't move right away. They take up some of the resistance in the spring and then it'll begin to pull. From my limited understanding of things like easy start trimmers where they're designed to just gently be pulled on, if that is the system this pull start is utilizing, then it would make sense you would want to be gentle while starting the motor, as the inner spring's secondary purpose is to assist in starting the motor by building up some resistance and then quickly releasing it. So if this is an easy start style of pulley, you wouldn't want to yank on it ever. When disassembling this unit, I expected that the spring might come undone, but I wasn't expecting it to be so severe. Fortunately, if this does happen to you, don't panic, because once we found the solution, it was actually relatively easy to return the spring in a short amount of time. The problem was finding that solution. I was overthinking it. 
trying to wind it in all sorts of different ways and use tools to keep it compressed so I could set it back in the cradle. And I didn't need any of that. Turns out all I had to do was just place the hook on the outside of the cradle and wind it from the outside in. Once you got it in, it set flush and stayed there on its own. So from this point, we were able to add grease and put it back in the bike. While I had the coil out of the spool, I didn't notice any issues with it. The spring steel seems fine and it doesn't look particularly fragile. I think for what it's designed to do, it should hold up just fine, so long as nothing else in this unit breaks and destroys it. Although the string on this coil is thin and a lot of people complain about it snapping, I opted just to go ahead and leave it for two reasons. I could have replaced it with some paracord or maybe some tough boot shoelaces, but honestly, it doesn't look as fragile as I thought it would be. And I think so long as I take precautions while starting the motor, it shouldn't break on me, but I might end up eating my words later on. It's not like a piece of string that you can tug on and it's just going to break. It really has to be yanked on for this to come loose. With grease on all moving parts and bearing surfaces inside the unit, we add a bit to the cogs which engage the pulley. And from there we're pretty much ready to take it out for a nice long test ride. After a few trouble-free days of riding the bike to and from work, as well as around town, I decided to disassemble the pull start once again just to check up and see how everything's doing. As far as the belt system's concerned, I'm still not sold on it being practical for any reason, however it is nice to be able to enjoy its benefits without worrying about stopping and starting the bike. Essentially, it's a slightly smoother ride, it's a lot quieter when the motor's off and you're rolling. You don't have to worry about debris on your chainstay from oil and grease, and you don't have to worry about rust because you don't have to oil and grease it, as well as a few other benefits here or there. But one of the downsides is, still, if you gun the throttle while you're going uphill, the torque of the motor will occasionally slip a cog, and you can't really feather the clutch too much while you're trying to pedal the bike from a dead stop because you'll slip cogs. If you accept those limitations and take it easy on the throttle while you're going from a dead stop or climbing a steep hill, then you might find it beneficial. That's all I have to say about it for right now. It still needs more testing because up until this point we really haven't been able to ride it much. So let's take a look at this pull start and see what issue just popped up. Well I'm glad I took this cover off when I did because apparently one of the engagement teeth, which is what I'll call it because I don't know what to call it, has come loose. It's not broken and there's only a slight bit of damage on it, nothing irreparable but it looks like the C-clip that holds it in came loose. I suspect this is because these are put in so sloppily, their tolerances are so loose, that it just flops around on the inside and eventually worked its way off. Also, centrifugal forces could have played a part in pulling the clip off of this tooth. I was fortunate enough to find the C-clip just attached to the magnet out of the way of everything, so that was lucky. 
Under closer examination of this tooth, as well as the one that's still attached to the pull start, I notice they're beginning to round out on the stopping edge. It's the edge that prevents the tooth from overextending. So I'm going to do something to try and help prevent that, as well as hopefully prevent these from working their way loose again. Essentially, I'm going to try and take up some of the extra space underneath the C-clip that allows these to flop around. I'm going to have to grind down a couple washers to get them to fit over it. It's going to be a snug fit, but that's kind of what we're going for. And another precaution I'll take is when reinserting the C-clips, I'll make sure that they're fully seated and positioned in such a way that centrifugal force can't pull them off of the tooth. Since we're taking these teeth off anyways to reinforce them, I decided to go ahead and weaken these push-out springs. Again, I don't know what to call them, but these are the springs that push the teeth out so they'll engage the magnet while you're pull starting the motor, and then centrifugal force will overcome them, pushing the teeth out of the way against the sides of the pull start unit. However, they're a little stiff, and they don't need to be, in my opinion. They really only need to be strong enough to just barely push the teeth out so they'll engage the motor every time. But once the motor is spinning even at low idle, they should be out of the way. However, stock, I notice they're not. When I'm running at low throttle or idle, I can hear them rubbing on the pull start mechanism. They're just slipping over the cogs, which isn't really a big deal considering how much grease I put on everything, but it's still a bit of unnecessary wear, and having them rattle around when they're already so loose in the unit is just unnecessary. So I go ahead and take these springs and I squeeze them together a bit so that the return force is a lot weaker. I made sure not to go too far with this because if they don't push the teeth out far enough, they might only partially engage the plastic, which could cause it to strip out. And finally, just to clarify what we've done is we've taken two washers and placed them underneath the C-clips that hold in the teeth so that the teeth don't wiggle around quite so much. The jury's still out on the belt system because obviously we haven't been able to do much testing on it up until now, so stay tuned for future videos so we can get a full conclusion on where this might actually be practical. As of right now, I don't know. But as far as the pull start goes, here's our summary. I really don't suggest using one unless you absolutely have to because of some physical limitation or just a bizarre build. If you have a second bike that's a project bike maybe you like to work on and tinker, then this could be a fun project, but you are taking a risk, not only with the pull start itself instantly detonating, but the magnet, magneto, the keyway, and the woodruff key could all be damaged when this thing self-destructs, so keep that in mind. And to a lot of my viewers, I want to give a public service announcement. If you only have one bike, and it's turned out to be so cheap, convenient, that you end up using it every day as your primary source of transportation, if you begin to rely on it for going to work, school, hospital, or any important thing, please do not experiment with that bike. Don't start going crazy, adding all these performance modifications experimenting with port work when you're still new. Obviously, if something makes the bike safer and more reliable, that's great. But if it's something you're not sure about, put that on your second bike, okay? Wait until you've got enough money for a project build and then start experimenting on that one and have your fun with that one. Leave your primary bike as reliable and safe as you can. Essentially, leave it stock if you have to because if it's running good, and you rely on it, then it's the bike you know you can use if you screw up the other one. It also means that you'll learn riding style before you learn how to go fast. If you do careless things and end up wrecking your only bike because you got a little too carried away with the modifications, then that just sucks. And it's heartbreaking when I see that stuff happen to some of my viewers. I'm not pointing anyone out and I'm not blaming anyone. It just happens and it sucks. So. There it is. Anyways, if you guys are curious to see how well this pull start holds up, stay tuned to the channel because when it eventually does break, and I'm sure it will, you'll know about it. But if by some miracle, the modifications and the information we have learned going through this process actually cause it to last, that'll be great too. Anyways, I hope this video was helpful, and until next time guys, ride safe.
He's a good boy. He's a good boy.